This has been a record-breaking time for winter storms accompanied by bitter cold and vast amounts of snow that is creating havoc all across the northern hemisphere. But even while the north suffers one of the coldest winters on record, in Greenland the ice is shedding like a popsicle due to the release of geothermal energy from deep within the earth. Some of Greenland's uh, fast-flowing glaciers are feeling the burn of this heat source, according to a new study which compiled temperature measurements for the past 10 years in the Young Sound Fjord, which is a 56-mile long inlet in uh, northeast Greenland. The study is clearly showing that East Greenland is a hot spot. The findings suggest that geothermal heat may be responsible for the rapid movement of the northeast ice stream, a 100 mile long ice flow that drains into several large coastal glaciers. It's well known that Greenland contains enough ice to raise sea levels by nearly 25 feet, were it all to melt. And melting may occur faster than we thought as the earth warms because of how Greenland's glaciers are anchored to bedrock. There is a well-conceived belief that much of the extreme climate we are witnessing today is being produced by geoengineering, which in turn is having a devastating effect on humans and all wildlife. The process is being used on a regular basis to control weather and climate patterns. Now it seems that scientists want to use it to cool the planet. A new study provides the consequences of the implementation of such an initiative beginning in 2020. Climate modeling would show that 5 teragrams of sulfate aerosols injected into the stratosphere every year to lower the temperature of Earth would be equivalent to a volcanic eruption one quarter the size of the 1991 Pinatubo eruption on an annual basis. Even if humanity began cutting carbon emissions by mid-century, the world would still keep warming, but at a slower rate. Cooling the planet by reflecting sunlight back into space would most likely cause the Amazon basin to dry up, which is one of the most biodiverse regions on Earth. This would have a tremendous impact on ecosystems, resulting in more wildfires and therefore more carbon emissions which in turn would lead to more geoengineering. So what we have then would be a vicious cycle of climate manipulation at the hands of humanity that would only worsen climate conditions. If aerosol spraying were to shut down, the result would be even worse as a warming surge would engulf the planet in a dramatic fashion over the course of the next 50 years. Precipitation patterns would shift, causing widespread wildlife die-offs and a fracturing of the habitat. The climate velocity would be four times greater on land and six times greater in the oceans than recent climate change. Therefore, both the Amazon and the Arctic would suffer greatly. So what we have here is a double-edged sword when it comes to controlling climate change. If we continue to spray the atmosphere in an attempt to reflect sunlight back into space, it will still take many decades to slow the pace of warming, while destroying ecosystems in the process. If we stop the spraying, then the warming accelerates at a much faster pace, thus leading to irreversible climate change, which in turn will bring this planet to its knees. There are forces at work which are changing the physical characteristics of the Earth. Some of the changes are self-induced, while others are caused by natural means such as our Sun and the cosmic flow of energy that it emits. And yes, there are additional forces at play that we do not fully understand, which are hidden in the makeup of our solar system that are having a universal impact on other planets as well as our own. All of these forces working together are having a major impact to life on Earth. 
Humanity has suffered through many tragedies and has endured the trials and tribulations of time. But we now are in an age where advanced technology has dominion over us and has shaped our ability to cope with a changing world. Once the technology fails, it will become a test of how well we can survive on a planet void of the comforts and pleasures that we now enjoy. As we gather to bear witness to the events that are unfolding before us, we will behold the beauty of our surroundings. We will be mindful that we are but a speck in the vastness of the universe, where time and space have no limits. As we look to the sky, we will remember that this is where we came from, and it is where we shall one day return. Thanks for watching.